This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When John the Baptist heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to Jesus, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, The lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. On the Sundays of the season of Advent, we are thinking together, imagining together, about the future and the ways God will transform the world for good. So we've been listening closely to these readings from Isaiah and the images they offer us about the change and renewal that God will bring. Over these three weeks, we're thinking about waiting for the day when swords are turned into plowshares, based on Isaiah 2. Waiting for the day when the wolf lives with the lamb, based on Isaiah 11. And waiting for the day when streams of water break forth in the desert, based on Isaiah 35. And so today, the last of these streams of water break forth in the desert. Here's a bit of that reading we heard from Isaiah chapter 35. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those, who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. Now, there's something interesting happening in these verses. A mixture of metaphors, so to speak. A a jumbling together of the images of our future hope. On the one hand, there are these references to physical infirmity. Weak hands feeble knees, the blind, the deaf, the lame. These are real illnesses and disabilities. And on the other hand, there are allusions to scenes in nature, desert and burning sand, pools and springs of water. These are physical characteristics of the world with a a contrast between the parched terrain and the lush, well-watered lands. Physical infirmities, places in nature. Well, what's the relationship between these? What do they have in common? Well, both are obstacles, you see. 
obstacles. Like suppose you're making a journey. Making a journey across a large expanse of land where you have to travel. Well, if that land is desert with no water anywhere and burning sand everywhere, well, that's going to make the trip very difficult. And suppose also that you and those in your group making this trip have physical constraints, weakness, blindness, an inability to walk, those are going to be obstacles to your travel as well. Well, you see, this is what actually happened. This is what happened in the history of Israel. God's people, the people Israel, our forebears in faith, they were conquered and carried away to a foreign land, and there they lived in captivity. And when the time came for prophets, prophets like Isaiah, to declare that their captivity was ending and that God would free them and bring them home, the people faced the prospect of having to get up and travel across a desert to return to the promised land. Can you picture that? That journey those challenges? And so, hear these words of Isaiah with that journey and those challenges in mind. God, through the prophet Isaiah, says, Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong. Do not fear. Here is your God. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. That must have sounded like really good news to the people of God then. The desert, no longer an impassable barren land, but full of springs of water. The weak, made strong by God. The lame, leaping like a deer and coming home. That was the promise of God, you see. A promise fulfilled among God's people for real. So why do we hear these words? We people of God sitting here now in this season of Advent. Well, I think it's because this is still a word of promise for us. Still a way for us to think about the promised future of God. The future of God, the future God promises is a future where streams of water break (coughs) forth in the desert. The future, you see, God has in store for us and the world is a future where the actual earth is transformed. Barren lands become vibrant again. The future God has in store for us and for the world is a future where the weak and burdened by illness or infirmity are made whole. The future God has in store for us and for the world is a future where there is enough water and enough food, and enough shelter for those who travel and those who need a home. This is what we believe. And we believe it because we trust God. We trust that the God who stepped into history to deliver His people before will step into history to free all the earth from decline and decay. That's the thing about all of these ways we've heard about the promises of God through the words of Isaiah this season. They are all great reversals, changes from the way things are now to the way God will make them be. From war to peace. 
from disagreement to unity, from barrenness to new life. That's the future we are looking for. The future we hope for. The future we pray for. So let's pray now. By Your power, great God, make a way in the deserts of this world. Mend the wounds of those who suffer. Make whole that which is broken. And sustain the weary with Your Word. Help us to welcome every healing and every outpouring of mercy as a sign that though death is against us, You are for us and have promised renewed life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.